When we think of superstars and legends, does this face come to your mind? This video is not to throw shade, but just to show how things are not really new and they kind of always been the same. So before JLo, there were groups like Nilly Vanilli. That group was made completely by a man who wanted to be a star in the music industry, but he was older than, I guess, the average, and he was a white man who wanted to sing black music, so he started two bands that got Grammys using his voice and other artists he could find voice, and I think the industry realized, hey, they don't need talent anymore. We just need puppets because the more we build people and keep all the intellectual abilities, the more we just send our workers into the world. So J-Lo became the ultimate revenge weapon against an artist who decided to, hmm, let's say, change the plan. The industry don't like artists when they change the plan. So let's talk about how J-Lo is the face of vocal stealing, I guess, or we could say lip sync battle, or could we say the 2021 old school OG? Because nowadays, many artists that you love can barely sing, can barely write, and often are not singing on their number one hit songs. It's all about swag, persona, personality, and what you're wearing. And if the kids like you, they don't care if you can sing. So take this journey with me and let's see why talent doesn't necessarily matter anymore. And is lip singing a talent? Are we not giving JLo credit for her ability to dance, perform, and act like she's doing something? Hmm, let's talk about it. We about that, we about that, we about that life. You be real little, I be real life. What you know about No. Sing a little chorus of the last album or of a song. The last album? Maybe I'll sing you a little bit of my Spanish stuff. Yes! Mm -hmm. fun. Um, let me think. Apresurate, amor mío, que me pesan las memorias, que recuerdo y el silencio. These guys work really hard at their craft, but the story ends the same. They usually are broken, torn, and usually just sad, and the story is very sad in the end, because the companies take advantage of them. They really do. And um, um, Sony... is but they never thought that this performer myself would outthink them yeah. so I'm leaving Sony a free agent um, <laughs> owning half of Sony So, I own half of Sony's publishing and, and I'm leaving them and they, they're very angry at me because of it, but um, the way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album. And Tommy Mottola is a devil. I'm not supposed to say what I'm going to say right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. Uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? <laughs> Turn that off, please. You know what? No, what? I don't mind. Tape it. Oh! Oh! Michael is getting gangsta today! Yeah, 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 yeah. Mariah Carey. After divorcing Tommy, came to me crying. Crying, she was crying so badly I had to hold her. And she said to me that this is an evil man. 
And Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones. And he's very, very evil. And she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being. And we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. Singer died, according to the coroner, from a deadly dose of the anesthetic propofol combined with lorazepam, an anti-anxiety medication. Propofol puts patients to sleep in seconds. The drug is also used with other anesthetics. The reason I put this part in, because this is a very important part of this story. So I want to just give you a quick backtrack. The reason Mariah Carey doesn't like Jennifer Lopez is because when Mariah Carey escaped, escaped Tommy Mottola at 19 years old, married to a grown man, twice her age, he wanted to destroy her. So he tried to, he thought he could make another star. So guess who he found that he thought he could make beat her? It was this girl. It's not her fault. She took the opportunity and she took Mariah's place as well. And if Mariah said that he was evil and doing all these things, imagine what J-Lo had to endure. But J-Lo had more drive to do it and she had less talent. So she needed Tommy Mottola and the machine to push her. And that's one of the reasons that she's not liked a lot by a lot, a lot of artists in the industry. If you notice, Jayla works with a lot of male artists, hip-hop artists, and Spanish artists. A lot of female artists don't really mess with her. And if Michael Jackson felt this way about Ty Matola, you can imagine his disdain for J-Lo. Especially the fact that Michael Jackson was a real artist. Like he sat in the studio, wrote his own songs, made his own beats. J-Lo was a more of a modern day artist. More of a Nilly Manilly. She's a great dancer and she's great at direction. But you have to think about it like this too. Artists like J-Lo is easier to control and easier to make more money off because she doesn't have the talent. You provide her with everything, so you charge for everything. Mariah Carey will go in the booth and write her own song and sing her own backgrounds, and you have to give her credit. But artists like J-Lo, you make more money. And the other reason I put the Michael Jackson clip was to also show you how they were very mad that he bought half of Sony. So that means that he bought half of Beyonce, half of Anne-Marie, half of J-Lo. Sony has some of the biggest artists in the world. And Michael Jackson secretly bought half the company and then left. That's important, guys. And what is with J-Lo? I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you know, a dream coming true. It's really incredible. Oh, here you were, 19? Mm -hmm. Okay, and he was 20 years older? And he's interested in you romantically. What did you think? And he was married, by the way. Well, well he said he was separated. I don't, whatever. But I don't want to play psychologist, but 20 years older than you, Tommy Mottola, was he a father figure? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. During this time in Mariah's Carey career, she had never even had a boyfriend. She got her first record deal, and then she was married to that label head. And I know everybody's like, oh, it's a fairy tale because we live in this world where we think this is so sweet. But he was 20 years older than her and he was married for 19 years, saw her, divorced his wife and married her immediately. And she couldn't even leave the house without permission. He knew what he was doing. Everyone knew what he's doing. But the world would keep allowing this. He did the same thing with J-Lo, but J-Lo doesn't get the, the, the sympathy. <sighs> Guys. Hey, let's, he listens to this interview and he gets mad. And he, and he may not want to put out your next album. I mean, he is in control in that sense of your albums, yes? He's the head of the company, so he's the one who's calling the shots. And really, I would like to have a good relationship with him. So while Mariah Carey was begging for her last two albums to be released, J-Lo had came out with the movie Selena. Not her in particular, but she was a star. And she started sending out a lot of demos and Tommy had found it. And his obsession with Mariah Carey shifted to J-Lo. He wanted to build the artist that could beat her and knock her down. And being that J-Lo had this high right now, he thought he could use her. But he wasn't done yet. Lopez's sophomore album, J-Lo, was released in 2001 and it featured a song entitled, I'm Real. I'm real. <laughs> Let me give you the story of I'm real. Can I give you the story yeah, of yeah, yeah. I'm real? Yeah, yeah. I'm real was so crazy, and I'm gonna throw Tommy under the bus a little bit, but I don't give a about Tommy, so it's all good. It's all good. I'm talking about Tommy Matola. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. So Tommy Matola calls me at like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. 6, 7, it was obscenely early, and he calls me because he found out me and Rule made a record with Mariah Carey. Mm. And at the time, 
he hated Mariah Carey. So he was pumping Jennifer Lopez to compete. Mm. So he calls me six, seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, what's up, Tom? What the f you want? This, 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 oh. He says, Irv, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's up? I need you to make a record with J-Lo, but I want you to put Ja Rule on it and make it a duet kind of a record. So immediately when he says that, I'm like, this yeah. He knows we just did this shit with Mariah, which right. was a duty record, and he's trying to f Mariah. Then I went into the creative part. I said, look, man, I want total creative control. I don't want you telling me what to make. If I got to do a record with J-Lo, I want to do it however the f I want to do it. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't give a f what you do as long as it's a duet with right. Ja. I said, cool. We literally made I'm Real in 10 minutes, guys. Your idea to make her say the N-word on that track? Because remember when that happened- Rue wrote, like, wrote it. Rue wrote it. Rue wrote the whole record. Like, she can't say that, and it was like- <laughs> So, boom. <coughs> we make the record. He gives us the jet. This is the, this is now I'm getting into the, the, the double toppy The double toppy. He gives us the jet, the Sony jet for the week. What's up, Andy? I have a question for Ja Rule. Okay. All right, is it true that Ashanti sung J-Lo's vocals in the beginning of her career? <gasps> no, that's not true. Uh, was that a rumor? Remember, was that a rumor? Yes. Oh, let, me, let me clear this story up. Because okay. It, it, it is a rumor going around. And it's, so here's what happened. So I wrote I'm Real. Okay. For Jennifer Lopez. And uh, I sung the original version of it as a Demo. reference. Okay. But I sound terrible, of course, on the reference. So Ashanti then sung the reference for Jennifer Lopez. And uh, when they mixed down the record, Irv left some of the vocals underneath. Oh. Ah, so, so, so Ashanti does appear on so the she song. Has some, she has some vocals underneath, I believe. And that, that is the rumor. I don't even know if well, it's really true. Well, but it sounds true. like you would know, though. I, I mean, don't fucking mix it. Well, no, but, <laughs> no, I know, but you you just yeah. said it as though but, that, no, is no, that is what happened. That is what happened. That is what okay. I, that, but it's J-Lo singing on the record, of course. But, right. but, but Ashanti's But vocals, there may be a little maybe, bit of a bed maybe, of Ashanti's uh, maybe, maybe. So, yeah. J-Lo is nothing but Ashanti in a wig. You heard it here oh, first. Don't do that. <laughs> do you know J-Lo at this point? The audience member said it. What do you think about people still referencing I don't know her all these years later? I still don't know her. Yeah. Do you know each other? No! No. Okay, you, here's she the says thing. you know her. Okay, I know she, you know what? I'm very forgetful. Okay. Apparently, because I don't remember the fact that it was just like, hi, I'm so and so, and then move on. And then like, hi, that's it. Right. If I had never had a conversation with you and someone asked me about you, I'd be like, I don't know him, but he seems cool. Right. Or, I don't know him. Does she seem cool? I don't know her.